Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review. It's a review of an Emwage, one of my favorite niche houses. Well, ex favorite niche houses from what they uh, were to what they are today. But I still love discussing their uh, fragrances with you guys. And if you've been following the channel, you know that uh, one of the series that I've been doing on Emwage is their library collection. So the library collection, for those of you who don't know, was initially started by Christopher Chong because uh, initially Emwage released fragrances as for men and for women. So the library collection was supposed to be this unisex offering. Uh, there was no name. They were originally just Opus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so forth and so on. Uh, they didn't have names, although that has changed now with the Fishman, of course, coming in and changing it into their modern bottles. So today we're all the way on Opus 7, which I do not have a into, I do not have a full bottle of, but I bet you I have probably 50 mils of decants of the stuff. And that's what stopped me from buying a bottle because I have so much juice. Uh, and they're the vintage decants that basically come like this. The new decants, uh, you'd be able to tell them. They look like uh, the new sort of emouage style. They don't look like this anymore. Um, this is what basically they used to look like here. The decant would sit in here. Very nice presentation for a decant, in my opinion. Um, the sprayers are very good. They even have little nice caps that came with them. So I was a fan of these old decants. Um, and so this is Opus 7 Reckless Leather, which came out in uh, 2013. So originally it had no name. And the, the way that the name came about with this fragrance is that there is a blurb. And the blurb, which they actually kept on the Amouage website, it's all that's written about it. If you go to Amouage.com, you'll see the exact blurb that um, they put out whenever they put out the fragrance, which basically says, um, <clears throat> wrong side, which basically says, Opus 7 is a green, woody, and leather fragrance evoking the juxtaposition of harmony with intensity of recklessness. So you can imagine here... Um, the uh, fish man, Mr. Raymond Salman, basically decided to name the fragrance Reckless Leather from the recklessness at the end of that sentence there. And voila, we have justified our position as creative director. Well done, Ray Raymond. Ray well done. Um, so the fish man strikes again. And they basically put them in bottles that look like this. Um, this is Opus um, 13, Silver Oud. But um, this is what the newer... Uh, collection, the ones that remain anyway, look like in, in this bottle. I've already reviewed this off of a decant, but I, I liked it enough that I ended up buying a bottle. Although, I wish I would have got the older presentation. I just prefer it. You know, I just prefer the older presentation, which basically looks like this. Um, and these bottles are now commanding a bit of a premium. So this, for example, is Opus 6, which I don't think I even made it into one of the new bottles. So I think Opus 6 is officially discontinued and already going for big money overseas. I have a review, again, of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I've done some early impression, excuse me, slash reviews of uh, the Opus line later on. Like I said, this off of a, excuse me, off of a decant, Opus 11, I did like an early impression of. Um, so but when all is said and done... The whole Opus line will hopefully be uh, reviewed by me. So, so let's talk about Opus 7 because um, Opus 7 is very interesting. And actually, I'm going to do a fresh spray because I've got a lot of juice to use. And what the hell? Might as well, right? I don't always do a fresh spray on camera. But uh, let's, let's, top, let's top old Rammer up. So um, basically, this is categorized as a spicy woody fragrance on the website. It's actually listed as um, a... Amber, leather, woody, spicy fragrance. So they just throw everything at you. Um, but I think the description in the little blurb that I read is very fair. Um, it is green, all right? It is leathery, and it is woody. Um, and it's actually vintage in style, okay? So what's very interesting about Opus 7 to me, and, and from my understanding, this is a collaboration between two all-star perfumers, Alberto Morias and Pierre Negrin. Okay, Pierre Negrin is like Amouage royalty for all that he's done for the House of Amouage uh, between Portrayal Man, Interlude Man, Opus 11, just on and on and on. You could name the amazing things that Pierre Negrin has done for the house. Um, and so this is kind of a mashup of a couple different cultures and styles. And it, it brings in these vintage elements, which we'll talk about uh, as we go through the review. It's, it's so good, though. The opening is uh, very challenging to uh, 
I would say it's very challenging to a newer nose or to someone who really doesn't like heavy, spicy fragrances, okay? Because if you read the note listing, which is basically um, galbanum in the top, and you definitely get a green aura to this fragrance. So galbanum, cardamom, nutmeg, pink pepper, and fenugreek with uh, leather, oud, patchouli, ambergris, and ambroxan with cypriol, frankincense, costus root, muscone, and sandalwood in the base. So that's the, the breakup. But um, what's interesting about this is if you watched my review for Amouage Jubilation 25 for women, which is uh, this one right here, um, at least I think it's this one right here. Nope, it's not this one right here. Uh, let's try again, Ram. Uh, it's actually this one right here. Yes, here we go. So Jubilation 25. I ended up buying this after the um, video that I did off of a, off of a sample. Dushan very kindly sent me some Jubilation for Women samples, and I loved it enough to go get a full bottle. But in that review, I said, and the reason I bring this up is because I said the note listing is correct, all except for one note missing. And that is a pretty big cumin note, and you will get it. It's a sweaty, animalic cumin note in Jubilation for Women, and it's a sweaty, animalic cumin note in Opus 7. And you know, Amouage has played with cumin in a lot of different fragrances, like I just mentioned, Jubilation for Women. Also, there's going to be a review coming up of uh, this bad boy right here, Fate Man. Uh, and, and Fate Man is probably the cumin fragrance to end all cumin fragrances, in my opinion. But, you know, Amouage Opus 7 comes damn close. It really comes close to competing with, uh, with Fate Man. They both hit you in the opening with this huge blast of sweaty almost curry smelling cumin, okay? Uh, and I actually don't mind it. I've come to love it. I think um, I think it's easy for Western noses to hate this because they instantly are going to make the link between like an Indian restaurant or, you know, this body odor like smell or something like that. But I've come to love it. Um, I don't know if I loved it at first. I think it's taken me a while, but since I've worn these fragrances for so long, Fate Man included, um, I've come to grown to love that opening and, but it's going to be challenging for, for newer noses. If you're somebody who, um, is used to wearing like freshies, you know, if you wore like Tommy for men and, and, and uh, Aqua de Joe and stuff like that, this is a complete 180 to that. This is a complete turn you around and start walking in the other direction. But for those of you who are tired of the same old, same old, if you're tired of smelling the same old designers that rehash the same stuff from the same oil houses and different packaging and charge hundreds of dollars for and you want something unique and different this is definitely in the unique and different category i'll tell you that right now and i really like the way that the cumin mixes with these kitchen spices in the opening with what i would say is like this green aura you know you could think about um a chef who got off of his shift at the indian restaurant left his apron on and just started walking into the woods and did kind of the eugene meditation in the woods right Be surrounded by beautiful green foliage uh beautiful green grass on 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 the uh, plane that he's sitting on and even a little bit of earthiness and rootiness underneath and those kitchen spices that are mixed with the cumin are kind of dominated by one spice to me and that is the cardamom the cardamom here is green it's cooling, it's fresh, it's, um, I love cardamom, and especially the first hour or so. That cardamom mixes with the cumin and that green galbanum, uh, slightly resinous, slightly sticky. The newer Amouage packaging has a packaging on it that kind of looks like resin dripping down the side of the box. I don't like the new packaging. Go figure. Surprise, surprise, right? But, this one actually does a respectable job with that little bit of resin dripping and in, in, in next to the um, Opus, Opus 7 Reckless Leather logo. Um, and I think that that green cardamom, the kitchen spice element, the green aura, and the cumin, the spicy opening with that fenugreek. And some say fenugreek adds a little bit of a baby vomit smell, all right? Like a little bit of a baby just ate green peas and then threw it up kind of smell. There's a little bit of that, I guess you could say. Um, there's a lot of different animalic notes that start to hit you as the fragrance not just opens, but dries. There's a lot going on here and it's complex. There's a lot to smell. There's a lot of transitions. Um, someone wrote me the other day and said, hey, what would be a good fragrance to check out if I want to see a fragrance that kind of transitions and changes 
this would be one such fragrance because it starts with that spicy animalic cumin opening and it changes into what we're going to discuss here as we talk about the fragrance. So um, remember, lots of different things going on. Uh, this is not a fragrance I think you're going to spray once and smell it five seconds after you spray and decide. You just, ne you just, it's impossible. You could be the best nose in the world and it's only like getting, you know, 5% of the picture, right? You have to give it time to develop on your skin. You have to wear it. Um, I'm actually going to go to the gym after this, which is going to be a lot of fun since I just doused myself in Opus 7. Uh, curry is literally going to be exuding from my pores. But um, if you um, like animalic fragrances and challenging notes and stuff like that, what ends up happening is oud and ambergris starts to work together. The oud accord is created in the usual amouage style, where it's a very well-made oud accord. Obviously, you can't compare it to the artisanal houses, but for what it is, for a niche oud accord, it's very good. I like amouage's oud. I like the oud accord that they've used in some of their fragrances, like Jubilation 25 for Men and Interlude Man and stuff like that. And here, the oud accord here is very well-made. Um, but if you're like an oud snob and you're debating the finer points of Sumatra oud versus Maroki oud versus... Indian Oud versus Chinese Oud, this, you know, and you're, and you're buying this for the Oud Accord. I could see how you may be a little bit let down, but I like the Oud Accord. And this is where I think you're really getting your money's worth because you have two all-star per perfumers <laughs> who are using their experience and their knowledge of fragrance history, not just of the past, but of trends in the future. Remember, this was 11 years ago. This smells like it would be a modern niche hit if you released it right now in 2024. I could imagine this being a niche hit in 1994, if there was such a thing as niche in 1994, and I could imagine this a niche hit 10 years in the future from now. Um, this just has this timeless elegance to it. Um, and, and I use that word specifically because it is a little bit, some people call this a museum scent. Like it's too, it's too, uh, museum scents is, is kind of a way for some people to put down fragrances that to them are unwearable. But I don't think any fragrance is really unwearable. I mean, I wear Mitt's Man to work, and some people say that's the most challenging fragrance of all time. I wear this to work, um, and so I don't think anything is really a true museum scent. I think it's, can you handle it yourself? Because you're the one wearing it. You're the one smelling it on, on you the most. I think when people pick stuff up in the air, it's different from when, niche, when you know, frag heads are going on their skin, right? It's just a different vibe in the air. And... What ends up happening is uh, they start bringing in some modern notes, some some notes that begin to push this away from the old school vintage. You know, uh, there's maybe a little hint of Devon in here by Aramis. Think of that green sheep or construction. There's a little hint of that, not as much as in Desandres by Bell by um, Les and Demo Les and Sorry, um, not Les and Demo Les Abstrates. Too many Les. Les Abstrates. Eugene's brand. Um, Bellam is, sorry, Desandres is much closer to, um, I would say that 70s Shipra Devon Accord, but this does, if you think about that green, you know, slightly animalic bit, this will get you in the ballpark, but done in more of a Middle Eastern style with the Oud and, um, Fenugreek and stuff like that, the Curry Cumin Accord. But it's mixed with, this is where I think Alberto Mordias probably really earned his stripes. Because Pierre Nguyen is amazing at creating smells and creating things that are completely different. You've never smelled anything like his creations, in my opinion, for Amouage. Some of the stuff he's done is just phenomenal, right? But sometimes they're out of left field. Alberto Mordias takes this and he makes it uh, a little bit more towards our century, all right? Um, he makes it a little bit more modern. So there is the modern Ambroxan. And um, there's something about it that to me gives the fragrance just a vibe of like one foot in the past and one foot in the present. All right. And maybe even one foot in the future if you have a third, if you have a third foot. Um, so if you look up the advertisement, which I will try to um, uh, link the thumbnail, I'll try to put it in the thumbnail if I can get it to work, is um, it almost looks like the bottles in the center and there's these flecks of spice that are kind of around the outside the original advertisement when it first came out in 2013 and if you look closely it'll it'll be hard for you to tell whether the flecks of spice are sort of emanating from the bottle and it's being like uh ejected out from the bottle or whether they're being like thrown at the bottle and the bottle's in the middle 
and the bottle's almost like it's held hostage because what's interesting is there is this um, sort of, uh, the bottle looks like it's bound. So it looks like leather is like wrapped around the neck of the bottle and wrapped around like the bottle's like literally in like a BDSM position, right? Um, and it, it almost looks like the bottle is being abused while, while tied up in leather. So it looks like Opus 7 is down with that kind of thing. It looks like it likes it. But um, some folks compare Opus 7 to fragrances like AL03. Like if you go to Parfumo and type in Opus 7, this is the comparison to it. And I can see why they did this, but I disagree because I think this is much more rooted in the past to me. By the way, if you're not familiar with this house, uh, this is a house called BL Parfum Kunstwerk. And um, BL Parfum Kunstwerk is a German house. Uh, and it, it literally translates to um, BL Perfume Works of Art, basically. Uh, and I think that the idea with this brand is very similar to the idea that Frederick Mall had with his brand, but I don't think this really ever took off, except for in smaller, like, fragrance circles, if you will. I'm going to review this one of this, these days, because this is much more rooted in, in the past without any of these modern elements that I'm telling you. So it doesn't feel like you're getting more of the sort of modern eau de cord. You know, it, it feels more like you're really just, when you wear something like this, uh, it really feels like you're wearing something that is like a niche rendition of, of a 80s Jill Sander leather fragrance. Like go watch some of my Jill Sander reviews uh, and that'll get you in the ballpark of this. But imagine like a niche modern version, if you will. Um, and, and that is half the story for Opus 7. The other half is that more modernity, which I'm kind of trying to harp on a little bit, and I feel like I'm failing. There's that amouage frankincense in the base, so the flecks of spice that were kind of thrown at the bottle, or ejected from the bottle, if you will. Maybe the bottle got extremely excited. Um, those flecks of spice are, um, you can think of them as the spice from the curry and everything that I was talking about in the opening, but you could also think of it as the frankincense, which is in the base, and um, it's mixed with a couple other things. Um, that um, you're probably familiar with if you've been watching my channel. One is Cipriol. Cipriol gives it the Oud Accord. It's part of the Oud Accord. Cipriol is usually very earthy, and um, it is commonly used in, um, in creating the Oud Accord. Okay, so there's many things that go into creating the Oud Accord usually, but Cipriol's sort of main smells are basically this earthy, woody smokiness that many people have come to associate with oud because so many houses when they use the oud term are really talking about some sort of a oud accord that is made up of cipriol so it gives it a warming earthiness to it um i call it kind of the vibration like um an ekg machine you know checking your heart it's the up and the down the vibration of cipriol uh feels a little bit tingly on the nose and you definitely get that here, but what you'll find as the hours tick by, the fragrance begins to become more and more wearable. So I've got an eight hour dry down right here. And um, some of that animalic funk is still there, but it starts to turn more wearable and becomes more modern. Okay, I shouldn't use the, the word more wearable. Uh, some people who hate the opening of this may say it's more bearable because the first couple hours can be pretty brutal, depending on your take on it. I love it. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's one of my favorite opuses. And if I didn't have like 50 mils of these, I have so many of these, um, then I would definitely have tried to get a vintage bottle. Um, I, I, I would always go for the vintage bottles, in my, my opinion, over the, over the new ones that kind of look like this. That's, that's just my two cents. That's like instilled in me. Um, it's like it was drilled into my head to go to the vintage. And um, you have to remember that it's important to know your reviewer, right? The person you're watching reviewing a scent. Because if you know my taste, you know I, I have a huge tolerance for animalic fragrances. Um, all kind of animalics. Civet, castorium, ouds. I love animalic uh, notes. And so as the hours tick by, the animalic notes, like I said, they never go away but they don't feel as um, in your face as the opening, right? Uh, and in that switch, what ends up happening is a couple ingredients are responsible for that. One is called musk, musk own, which is, a, um, which is the main ingredient of natural musk. Nowadays, they actually synthetically can produce it, but it's probably the closest thing you're going to get in this 
environment we live in nowadays to real musk. You'll never see an Amouage use real musk. You know, it's just not going to happen. If you want the real musk, you have to go to the artisanal fragrances, which I talk about on the channel. You have to go to the Sultan Pasha's, the, uh, well, actually, I don't even think Sultan Pasha uses real musk. You have to go to the Ensars, the Aris La Dore's, the, um, you know, Bortnikov has some real musk fragrances. So those are the brands you have to go to. Um, which I'm very sad that I missed out. Well, I didn't miss out because I couldn't buy it because of the divorce, but uh, Aris Lodori just put out his new musk collection. God, I, I really cannot wait to smell some of those. Um, but so you get this musky feel. The fragrance really does turn into a musky boy, I'll tell you that. And um, along with that musky feel as it dries down, uh, I would describe I mean, this as one of the reference fragrances for this particular material, and that is the note of Costas Root. And Costas Root is sometimes one of the harder animalic materials for um, people to handle. And the reason is, is that it can smell somewhat ancient and it can smell like wet or damp, unwashed hair. Okay, so for those of you who are maybe thinking hippies right now, maybe a little bit of that. Uh, I always think of it as like animal fur or animal hair that uh, like imagine it, imagine the den where like an animal sleeps, right? Like um, imagine like a wild dog or something sleeps in uh, some old dog bed that got thrown out, right? And it's in the rain and the dog sleeps on it every single day and it never gets washed and it's out in the weather. And you know, you just think about how that bed starts to smell as the oils from the dog's hair and, and the dirt and everything gets on there. That's a little bit what Costa smells like. I um. I have reviewed a fragrance that I consider to be like the Costas fragrance. And actually, I would say that this fragrance maybe inspired an entire generation of the 1980s, which I absolutely love. It's a fragrance that no one talks about. It has a vintage Hall of Fame review on my channel, and it's called Eigner Super Fragrance for Men. It's also a German fragrance, interestingly enough. So two German fragrances on the list. But uh, Etienne Eigner is the house. Um, and this is called Super Fragrance for Men. So you can go check out my review. Luckily, I have a second one of these because you can see I have completely um, used up this 15 mil here. Uh, and so there is a second one in reserve for the Ram, but I'm very hesitant to use it because, oh yeah, I mean, oh, so uh, amazing. This is one of the best uh, 70s fragrance that no one talks about, in my opinion. And um, I think this really set the stage or, or allowed fragrances like Koros and um, Chanel Antaeus and stuff like that to really then take the spotlight and shine early in the 80s. You know, Eigner's Super Fragrance kind of paved the way, did the dirt, the heavy lifting. And um, so, but this is a reference Costas fragrance. And Amouage Opus 7 is a reference Costas root fragrance. These two. I would say, if you said, Ramsey, I want to explore the note of Costas root, those two hands down. Now, good luck finding this one. You got, you're going to have to hunt. You're going to have to pull out your wallet. You're going to have to have a fat wallet to go get a vintage bottle of that. That's why I got those 15 mils. Um, but uh, Costas root definitely is pungent. It's animalic. And it blends with that musky, musk, muscone dry, uh, dry down I was telling you guys about. And the fragrance turns very earthy. And even though some of the zing of the animalic notes kind of go away. They never dissipate. They just change a little bit. You know, they go from that heaven, heavy kitchen spice cumin into that musky, unwashed hair. Um, like I said earlier, fenugreek sometimes has a little bit of a green baby throw up smell. Uh, and it is, so imagine some of the things I'm saying. Unwashed hair, baby throw up smell, animalic, dirty, sweaty cumin. And I'm like, I fucking love this stuff. So there you go. That is uh, the art of perfumery in a nutshell. A lot of times if it's something where I hear a lot of people, it's interesting because if I ever find a fragrance where a lot of people are like, oh my God, that's so disgusting. I'm like, I'm going to love that, uh, which is absolutely nuts. But that's just, and I'm, and it's not something that you can fake. You, you can't fake the kind of love that I have for these type of fragrances. I literally think that as the years go on and as you smell lots of things, your nose changes. I think it literally evolves. You know, like if you go to the gym every day and work out, your body evolves. I think your nose evolves. Um, and so that's that's kind of my take on it. It's the only way I can describe it. But uh, some of these more challenging fragrances you have to spend time with. You have to 
get to understand that distinctly animalic undertone and come to live with it, let it be part of your body, let it sort of blend in with your personal scent. And um, uh, I think that along with that, there's a little bit of an earthy element, like a, not necessarily like a soil element, like in Figment Man, which is next on the Amouage to review docket, by the way. Uh, I think Figment Man is probably the most challenging Amouage of all, period. Uh, even more challenging than Opus 7. Although Opus 7 comes close, Figment, I think, is even more challenging because Figment um, is more like a, you know, Koros buried in soil, literal, like, earthy soil. Um, like, you know, you're down deep where the earthworms live, right? You're cutting earthworms in half. Um, that is a little bit of Figment Man, and I, I think it's probably the most challenging but one of the most artistic and one of the most overlooked amouages. But, um, um, you know, uh, Opus Opus 7 is, is right there. Um, I think it's a little easier to wear because of some of these more modern elements that, um, that Alberto Mordias, who is kind of like the king of easy-to-wear fragrances. So it's just funny seeing Alberto Mordias' name on these type of fragrances. And I reviewed one from him called... Um, Gucci Guilty Absolute, probably one of his best designer scents he ever made as far as I'm concerned. And um, that's a couple animalic challenging fragrances. So the image of him just pumping out easy to wear designers is not true. I mean, he does other things. But um, Opus 7 for me, you know, full bottle worthy, yes. Now, the, the elephant in the room, which I don't know, so I'm going to have to rely, I'm going to have to use my uh, Ask the Audience, uh, you know, lifeline here is that I don't know if the new Opus 7, which comes in this bottle, smells like the vintage Opus 7 sample that I'm sampling, um, that I'm that I'm go doing the review off of. That, I don't know. So that is a risk. I would say, you know, to mitigate that risk, if it's like a $50 difference or something between the vintage and the modern bottle, get the vintage. Um, that, that would be a safe way to kind of protect yourself. But um, if anyone knows, if anyone has ever done like a comparison between the new bottles of Opus 7 and the uh, older bottle and the older formula. Let me know. I don't know if there's been a change. I have no idea. But, um, oh, I mean, just a reference Costas fragrance, one of the best human executions that is not listed in a note listing. Um, you know, that kitchen spice, that green aura. Uh, and this is definitely a green fragrance. You know, I don't think I emphasize the Galbanum's impact on this fragrance enough. But there's definitely a resinous green aspect to it. And a green aura, I think, all the way through is fair. And drying down to that musky boy with the Costas, that unwashed animalic animal undertone. My kind of fragrance through and through. So this definitely gets thumbs up from the Ram. Um... You know, not happy with what has happened with the uh, uh, Opus line, though. I'll tell you that. So, you know, the only ones who basically made it into the um, into the new bottles in the library collection are Opus 5, which I've reviewed on the channel. It's now known as Wood Symphony. Opus 7, which you just listened to the review. Uh, and uh, that is it. From the, like, Christopher Chong era versions of Opus. That's it. Uh, everything else in the Opus line now currently on the Amouage website is, like, King Blue, which I reviewed on the channel, and I think it's shite. Uh, Royal Tobacco, which is probably, like, if you said, Ramsey, you get to buy one of the newer, you know, releases that you don't have in your collection. Royal Tobacco. I don't even have to think about it. That is full bottle worthy to me. It's fantastic. Um... Rose Incense, which I remember smelling and passing and liking, but I have not reviewed it on the channel. That was Opus 12. That may have been a Chong. That one may still be um, may still be there. And then Silver Oud, which is the one that I reviewed on the channel already. And that's it. So that means Opus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, all gone. Uh, if that's if that's true and more are not coming out, I, and it doesn't seem like more are coming out, it seems like they're just chopping them, which really kind of boils my blood. I'm not gonna lie, it really does. Uh, I think Amouage is going down a shit path in my opinion, but I have made that um, feeling known many a times. So uh, that's my two cents on it. 
Uh, let me know if there's uh, anyone out there who has smelled the new juice of Opus versus, versus the Opus 7, the vintage one I'm talking about here today. Let me know if you have smelled Reckless Leather, uh, Opus 7. And uh, I appreciate everyone watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. I love it. I love the interaction with you guys. I love the back and forth. Thank you to everyone who is part of uh, the Ram fam, as Rogra says. So thank you for being here, guys. Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.